So applications handle data. That's one of the things they do. They handle data, they can do conditional statements, and they can do things really quickly with iterative loops. Here we're going to look at data and data that changes. And when you got data that changes, we call that variables. And so to explore variables, I'm going to create a new process in UiPath Studio, and I'm going to call it variables. I know it's not a very creative name, but I'm not a very creative person. Now, as that starts up, I just wanted to take you to the UiPath Associate Certification Objectives, and you can see that there's an objective here specifically for variables and arguments, and it says that anybody who wants to pass the UiPath Associate Certification Exam should be able to describe the different variable types, not all of them, but the key ones, how those variables are used in UiPath Studio, how they are managed, and some best practices for scope. Now, I'm not going to get into scope right now, but I'd like to cover some of those other points with this application I just created. So I'm going to open the main workflow, and after opening the main workflow, I'm going to add a sequence right onto the heart of it. And after I've done that in the lower left-hand corner, I'm going to click on the Variables tab. On the Variables tab, probably don't have to tell you, but that's where you go to create variables in UiPath Studio. It's worth clicking on variable type. Take a look at the different variable types that are available just by default right off the bat. Boolean, that's your true or false. Int32, that's whole numbers. Object, that can actually be pretty much anything because everything's an object in an object-oriented world. The data table, that's used for typically handling the data that goes inside of an Excel sheet that we've, data we've pulled from an Excel sheet. Array of T, which just means an array of anything. And then there's browse for types. If there's a type that you're looking for, like the dictionary class, you can go into that browse for types. So let's see how you can use this window. Let's create a, a new variable. I'm going to call this the message. It's going to be of type string, and I'll give it the message, hello world. Click away to commit that, and there you go. I've got a new variable called hello world. And I could come over into the activities tab and look for the message box. And then printing out the value of that variable is just as simple as typing the variable name into this box. In fact, the IntelliSense will come up right away and it'll automatically put that in. I can click debug file and boom, all of a sudden, hello world comes up in the message box. So now I've displayed that property. Now you should always note that there's the properties tab on the right hand side and you can almost always set a variable in this window as well. So you can see right there, there's that text property. I can type message in there, and that would be another way to get the variable to display. But you know what? Why not create another variable? I'm going to create a variable called flag, F-L-A-G, and it'll be of type Boolean, true or false. And when I type it in, I just have to type in true. And there you see we've got a true value now. With Booleans, it can be true, it can be false. No double quotes. With text, with a string, it has to be in double quotes. With a Boolean, it's not in double quotes. It's just true or false. And also, we don't use the zero or one. So some languages allow zero and one to be true and false. Here, it has to be true or it has to be false. Now notice I've got a little error here, and the error says, well, you need a value for the message box to display, and I just want to display the flag. So Another approach to setting a variable is to do it over in this properties window. And I'll just put flag in there. And now that Boolean value, which has been set to true, should print out when I run the application. And does it? Boom, there it is. That's the true value. So what have we got? We've got Booleans, we've got strings. What else do we have in there? We've got the int32. Don't get that confused with int. A lot of times they'll ask you if the variable type is int on the UiPath associated exam, it's not, it's int32. So just keep that in your head there. I don't know, I could make this the magic number. And what's the magic number? Maybe the magic number will be seven, no double quotes, just a whole number here. And I could go over here and I could just print out the magic number. And again, if I run this, boom, there we see that magic number 
seven being displayed. So that's kind of neat how that works over there. Now there's a couple of other data types. I mentioned there is this array type, this like array of T. The, the T is like fill in the blanks later. What do you want to do? You want it to be strings? Do you want it to be ints? Let's say I want to create an array of ints. I could say, hey, it's going to be an array of int32 objects. I just got the option Boolean string, stuff like that. But I'm just going to make it int32. What will I call it? I'll call it I, I need arrays because it's arrays. And there, there's the syntax there, 1, 2, 3. And if you want to print that out, well, here in this message box, you reference the variable. I need arrays. And then what is it? It is something like, I don't know, is it element at? There's element at, I can find that method. So objects have methods and this int32 object has a method called element at, and we'll do element at zero because it uses zero based counting. And so element at zero should be the number one in my array. And as that come up, there we go. We have now got that number one coming up. So there you go. That's your default set of data types. I don't think we covered object and we didn't cover data table. We'll cover data table once we start getting into Excel automation. It's worth noting that you do have this browse for types option. And if there's something not there in the default list, you can come over here and you can look for it. So, you know, you type in hash and it'll give you hash set, hash table, hash table assist, hash algorithm. If you type in dictionary, it'll give you the dictionary class. So there's the system dictionary class right there. So if there's some custom type that you want, all you have to do is the browse for and you should be able to find it. And so there you go. That's just a quick overview of the basic variable types in UiPath and how you can use them.